Welcome back to my workshop. Today I wanted to do a video that has been uh, requested in the comment section over and over. The first request was that I make more videos and the second one is do more tool videos. The power tools I want to go over today are not your standard cordless kit. So uh, Everybody should know that you, you need your drill, your impact. What else should you have? circular saw. Uh, this is pretty much common sense so I want to go over some tools that uh, I use a lot and make me a lot of money doing home improvement. Um, the channel's got over 6 million views and over 13,000 comments and I've read every single comment and there are some people who uh, just are new to tools or home improvement and they just don't have the knowledge that a lot of us do uh, on seeing things. So some of this may be uh, common sense, but to a lot of people, they've never heard or seen of these tools. First tool, angle grinders. Probably wondering why the heck I have five angle grinders. Well, some of them do different things. Uh, this one here, oh, let me set them all down. This one here, I really like. I think it's a drill master. I've had it for a long time. I use this for polishing glass and granite and stone. What else? Right, mostly granite countertops that have been chipped or that I'm custom cutting. Um, I've got a whole system over here on the shelf of these diamond something or other pads. Now this is variable speed right here. It's it's pretty powerful. Um, I've got a big disc like this that I can put on here um, for for putting on like for like a big sand. I'm looking over here for the big sanding disc. So for like a big sanding disc. Um, so this one here is variable speed, so that you don't heat up your work. And it's been doing good because uh, I use this with water quite a bit and. It's, uh, it's holding up. This one here, this is a cordless 18 volt. Um, this is the meant for a lithium battery, uh, but it, it takes these old ones uh, as well. It's an 18 volt. I still haven't uh, purchased the 20 volt um, angle grinder. I, I assume I will someday, but this one here, I use the most, uh, when I'm doing handyman work around town. Now this one here is, as you can see, it's got a diamond blade on it. I use this mostly for cutting tile. Um, just, you can do circles with it. Uh, you can do a lot of things uh, masonry. Another thing that I use the diamond blade for is cast iron pipe. You use one of these and it goes right through it just like you would be going through a piece of tile or a piece of granite with this. Um, this is a, a porter cable. This one here is a Craftsman. This one has a grinding disc on it. Um, so you can grind, not necessarily for making fine cuts. I don't know why I've, this is very close to the porter cable, but I just keep the specific blade for the specific task on each, each grinder. Now there is this one, the lime green one. Uh, this has a sanding disc on it. This Ryobi angle grinder, I'm not sure on the specs. This is fairly underpowered compared to all these other ones. It's even less powerful than the 18 volt corded version. Um, but in a pinch, I'm not sure why I bought this thing. I think it's because, uh, I'm not sure why I bought it, but I got it. It was It's very cheap. It's kind of a, a throwaway tool if it ever does wear out. Um, and as you can see, it's it's set up with a sanding disc on there. And I've got a whole bunch of sanding and grinding discs over here. Flap discs. Um, yeah, I even have these these polishing uh, discs here. I got these uh, these 3M Scotch-Brite type discs and then the, the polishing wheel. That's my first pick is an angle grinder. Uh, the reason I picked this is just last week someone left a comment asking what is that thing with the circular blade that you're cutting with? 
and it was oh it was this one here the next tool I have picked out I also think is a necessity for home improvement remodeling and handyman jobs and that's a compound sliding miter saw uh, this one here is a big heavy 12 inch beast um, I used to take this with me every day for years got to the point where it was such a pain in the butt to get out of the trailer that I started using other tools that weren't perfect for the job instead of using this one just because it was such a nuisance to getting it out so right now it stays in the workshop it gets a, a good bit of use in here as you've seen in my past videos what I replaced it with is this cheap cobalt seven and a quarter inch compound sliding miter saw this just swings around like that to get your different angles you can also swing over to just past 45 degrees now all these come with stops you can see this one here this is an adjustment to get your perfect 90 what I use is this this machinist square here I'll go over this in in future videos on how to set up your saw but here's just a quick um, example putting this this part here on the, the base of the saw right there and I just slide it over and make sure that it's a 90 90 degree angle and if it's not uh, I adjust this screw right down here and at the 45 degree stop there's another screw that looks just like this right right over there now this saw here has the same adjustments but it's old and heavily heavily used um, this one will swing both ways swings this way and this way and like i was just saying I can't get it adjusted and stay adjusted so that it is suitable for stain grade trim. Uh, so that's why I switched to this one. I've gotten this one pretty darn tight um, with the with the joints that I've been cutting with uh, with that. Uh, you can cut more than just wood with this. This will slice right through aluminum like it's butter. See, this one's a little beat, and it does have a much larger capacity I think that's like a 14 inch cross cut this one here I think you could get a 2x8 2x10 cross cut on there the next tool I believe is a necessity for home improvement is a table saw now this is a DeWalt this is a DWE7480 just Google that. I'll put it on the screen. DWE7480. Uh, it has a 24 inch rip capacity. It's a 10 inch, 110 volt. And for the money, I think this would be your best job site table saw. It's also highly modifiable. That's a, the correct word for it. If you look on YouTube, there are a lot of guys who are taking this small job site table saw and turning it into something like this of course it's not going to weigh 700 pounds but they're they're building it into a, a workbench where there's uh, you know extensions that go out to the side uh, outfeed tables now this table saw uh, if you've been around the the channel and watched some of my workshop videos you can tell I'm pretty darn proud of this table saw uh, it's in, in the 700 pound range. Uh, it's a Powermatic 66. Uh, it's 3 horsepower, 10 inch, with a 50 inch rip capacity. It's got the classic, uh, I don't even know how to pronounce it, Biesemeyer. I think that's how you pronounce it. Uh, designed uh, fence, and it's, it's true. Um, and this one is also very true. Previously, I was using that Hitachi table saw that I got at a flea market. Uh, that fence, uh, it works, but you always have to measure from the fence to the blade. Uh, 
and you have to measure the, the front of the blade and the back of the blade to the fence to make sure that it's straight. Both this one and this one, they are, they are spot on. And you don't have to take your, your measurement from the front to the back of the blade. These things are rock solid. Now another thing that's pretty cool about this is the nickel test. So I'm going to show you what the nickel test is. So the blade's in there, uh, but I just have it down. It'd be kind of silly having it up, turn it on. This is a standard nickel. And this is a machined cast iron top. Now when I turn this on, this thing is so steady and has no vibration at all that that nickel will stay there and not fall over. Now, it didn't even wiggle. That is kind of a, a little test for a workshop grade table saw. I did buy this table saw used from a cabinet shop that went out of business. And if there's any interest, um, I can do a video on how I went about testing this saw to make sure that it was true. And this here, this magnetic dial indicator, um, played a big role in, in how I determined that this was a good buy, good used buy. Uh, this table saw, th this model's been discontinued, but the direct replacement runs, I think, just over $2,000. But with the, the extension it, uh, out to 51 inch rip capacity, it might be more. Now you might be wondering, will this DeWalt job site table saw do the nickel test? Well, I have it sitting on a solid surface. Actually, I'll adjust that foot over a little bit. Right there. And we'll see if it'll even, uh, if I can even stand it. Okay, I can stand it on the side. I, this is not a cast iron machine surface. This is an aluminum surface. I am gonna put the blade down just, and it, I mean, it, the design of this is so nice. Nice, a little smooth cranking to get this blade down. Well, it worked. It started swiveling around a little bit. Let's see what happens when you put it closer to the blade. It could just get blown over though. Definitely the job site table saw. If I didn't have this large workshop, I would not have room for this big table saw. And I would use this saw in whatever workshop space I had built into some sort of table that has an in-feed and out-feed and, and maybe a wing. The next tool on the list is a router. And any one of these routers will work. And I'm gonna just go over briefly what they do. Now this Porter cable and this Bosch are pretty much the same. The Porter cable has a lot more gadgetry um, that comes with this specific kit. Um, I lost the collet on this. I actually still remember the day I dropped it in a driveway and I searched for 20 minutes trying to find the collet that goes in there and I needed to do work that day and you can't just find that collet off the shelf at Home Depot. So I went straight to the store and I bought this Bosch. Bosch doesn't come with all this stuff. It comes with just this one guide here. And this guide I've used quite a bit. I use it on the barn door installs to put route the groove in the bottom of the door. This one's a little bit larger. Um, you can see I've got just a round over bit on this one here. I used this one quite a bit when I was uh, installing uh, stair treads to round over the exposed edge of the stair tread because they don't come uh, rounded on the ends. They come uh, square cut. But the most common use for one of these routers, uh, any three of these will do, is with a jig similar to this. And this is for uh, routing in the hinge pockets on a door. Um, a lot of times I go to a house that's, uh, that's been a rental and it's been beat up and they just need that one door slab replaced. And 
right here, this style, is an example of what a, uh, a mortised hinge pocket looks like. So that's the, the most common use that I have for a router is definitely I've done hundreds of door slabs. Not pre-hung doors, but actually just replacing the door, the physical slab. And this, this jig here and any one of these routers will do that job. Another real common use for a router with a roundover bit is just simply building shelves. A lot of times I'll take a piece of plywood, oops, piece of plywood, glue and nail a piece of hardboard on the front of it and then put a rounded, uh, rounded edge on that hardboard. And you have a nice looking shelf that goes wherever you want it. There's four tools I would say necessary for home improvement and running a successful handyman business. And if you're running a remodeling business, this is all just obvious common knowledge. Um, but if you were thinking of remodeling your own house, uh, none of these tools uh, would be like a one, one time use and then it sits on a shelf. There's multiple uses for all these tools, but I think they would benefit everybody. If you have any questions, please put them in the comment section. Um, if you have any more requests, video requests, um, as far as jobs go, I do whatever I'm hired to do. I've, I've been trying to film as much as I can. Um, I'm still only at about 50%, maybe 40 to 50% of the jobs I'm able to videotape and put on YouTube uh, just for the logistics of doing the job don't allow for me to film it. But please put your request down below. Goodbye.